Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS. In this video, we're going to use the new HandyScan Max to 3D scan some electrical panels, conduit, and transformer like you see here. All right, let's start and talk about why you would want to 3D scan uh, what you see. Now, this here is just in our office. It's pretty, pretty simple setup. But this can be very complex, very large uh, panels, layouts, conduit. And there could be other things in the way, piping, machinery, et cetera. But generally, a lot of electrical contractors need to come in. They might be upgrading. They may have to build some custom cabinets for exposed wires, conduits, electrical equipment, whatever it may be. Um, uh, so they'll want to come in and be able to scan it so they can fabricate some stuff or they need to document it. It's not documented, it's not in a drawing or there's no 3D CAD for it so they're going to want to create that. And this new HandyScan Max is perfect for this kind of work because again it can be quite a large layout, might be in, in numerous uh, locations so we're going we're gonna to use this new HandyScan Max and see how it does. Now if you're interested in the HandyScan Max whether you'd like to purchase it. Um, we can provide a demo both uh, in, in person or virtual, or maybe you want to hire us to come out and do some 3D scanning, reverse engineering, or inspection. I'm going to put a link in the description below uh, with our contact information and a quick contact form if you want to just reach out and uh, talk to us. But uh, what we'll do next is we're going to get it set up. We'll talk about the different targets, then we'll target and actually get into some scanning. Okay, so let's talk about targeting with the HandyScan Max because targeting is still required and important, but when you're scanning something large, um, you know, it, it, you want to have some different options depending on what you're doing. So uh, I've got here just kind of the most common target uh, setups that we use, starting with this uh, new uh, target kit you can purchase. Um, that has the targets in it. It's, a, it's a, a small round sphere, so it's got targets all the way around it, and it's got a magnet, so anything that's magnetic, of course, it will stick to that. There's kind of the half dome that we've been using for years, and we've made this uh, uh, CAD model available so you can 3D print your own, put your, put your targets on it, glue a magnet on the back, and of course, you can use that, and those work great. Um, of course, the traditional triangles um, that we've always been using. You've got your standard, just regular sticky targets and different adhesives, you can use that. Also, just individual magnetic targets. Uh, we just buy um, one millimeter thick, I think by 12 millimeter diameter uh, magnets you know, off the internet and then just put a little uh, target on it. And of course, you can do that. And then finally, we have here our speed target tape. This is great for larger objects. Um, you can reuse this. It's basically targets on a thin mylar type tape. Uh, we'll show this in a few minutes. Uh, but again, you can peel it off, put it somewhere else. This is also great. So you've got different options here. And we'll talk about in the software uh, what the software will do, especially with some of these other targets. There's some new features in there. Pretty nice. But here's your different options for targeting with the HandyScan Max. Okay, so I went ahead and put the targets on, and since the uh, magnetic targets are so easy, uh, not much to see, you just randomly place them. Now, if you want an in-depth demo of the HandyScan Max, we've got a, a full in-depth demo that's going to really walk you through all the features of it. We're not going to go into all of that in this video, so we'll put a, a, in the description below a link to a really in-depth demo video on, on everything about it. But basically, uh, we're gonna run in the middle mode. There's, a, there's on the HandyScan Max Elite, there's a kind of a short, standard, and, and wide mode. And again, we're not gonna get into that. The, the middle mode is what you're gonna use the most. And you'll want targets about every 18 inches apart, uh, give or take. Uh, but again, since I've got the magnetic ones and they're so easy to put on, um, it doesn't hurt to just put a bunch on. Also, you're gonna see the scale bars here. Now you don't have to use scale bars, but they do come with the system. The Elite comes with two, uh, the Standard Max comes with one, but they do uh, uh, help in the accuracy. So basically as we're scanning, these scale bars have a known distance. Um, the scanner will see them, pick it up, 
and basically compensate and just make sure that everything is as accurate as possible. So it's, it's not a big deal to throw them in. Um, they come with these little stands that are also magnetic. I've just got one horizontal, one vertical. And then finally, I've cut a couple pieces of the speed target tape just to show, uh, just to show that. And what's nice about this is it has an adhesive back. You peel off the, uh, the backing um, or, and uh, you, know, you can just put it wherever. I'm just gonna put one here. And what's nice about it is it's clear. So the scanner kind of just scans right through it. So we'll put one there and we'll put one over here. Also just kind of maybe on an angle. So the beauty is you can use any combination of targets uh, with the system and uh, they'll all work. So we've got everything set up uh, here and we're ready to start doing the 3D scanning. So you can kind of see I've got pucks on the ground, pucks up in the air, basically anywhere I could get a magnet that, that would um, you know, stay on magnetically through a couple speed target uh, strips in there and we're ready to start uh, scanning. All right, so we're ready to start scanning. I've got my laptop right here uh, close by that I can see it. You can also, there's a mount on here if you wanna put like a, your, your phone or a tablet and remote view, you still need to be plugged into the laptop. But when you're doing large stuff, sometimes it's hard to see your screen. You can basically have a remote view right here. You can actually control the software and everything from right here. So just keep that in mind. Now, it's recommended that you pre-scan the targets. When you're doing large stuff, it's good to get all the targets scanned so the kind of the software knows where they are. So I've already told the software to go ahead and scan targets. And basically what we do is we just kind of move around. And this is, you know, typical of the other Creoform scanners. Now, we also want to get those scale bars. And what's kind of new here is as you're scanning both the targets and the scale bar, um, you'll see them turn green. And what that basically means is, you know, it's a good target, meaning we've read a uh, uh, we've taken enough readings on the target. You see the scale bar just turned green there as well. Um, you've basically moved around and kind of collected those targets with enough, uh, you know, different positions for it to, to get a good read, and that just really helps your accuracy. Now, you don't have to scan every single target, but you want to try to get, you know, as many of them as you can. Um, certainly, it'll pick, them, pick up the rest of them as it's going along and scanning. So once you do that, you can stop, and we'll exit out of that, and then we'll go ahead and do the actual 3D scanning. Okay, so with our targets all 3D scanned, we're ready to actually scan the, the surface and collect the data. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, very similar to every other Creoform scanner. You've got this smart control on the back that has a lot of features. You basically push the button and we start 3D scanning. Now, the biggest thing you'll notice right away is how much farther away we are. We're in that middle mode, that standard mode, and you can see I can go back all the way to about right here. I get the same indicators um, as you'd see on most Creoform scanners. One of the biggest differences is we have 38 laser lines. So you can see we're just scanning a huge amount of data um, at one time in, in a very large area. So like every scanner, uh, Creoform scanner, you just move around, it's line of sight of course, and you just collect the data uh, that you need. Now, you'll notice the data will be yellow and then it turns teal. That is telling us we have enough scan data based on the resolution that we're using. And now this, in the standard mode, the default is two millimeter, um, which uh, we can adjust up and down. We'll get into that when we go more into the software. Uh, but, uh, you know, you just move around and, you know, you don't necessarily have to uh, have it all teal. It just kind of depends on what you're scanning. And, you know, these flat walls, um, we're, we're going to collect plenty of data uh, that we don't necessarily have to have two millimeters worth. So you can decide as you go along, you know, what's reasonable. But, but when you see it go from uh, teal or sorry, yellow to teal, that's telling you based on that resolution, you have enough data. Okay. So you just, again, work your way around. At any time, we can stop, zoom in, uh, zoom out. And we talked about having the remote viewing. You can do the same thing uh, if you have the remote viewing set up and control. You can stop and look at your data. So pretty standard Creoform stuff at this point. Just move around, get all of your, you know, everything you want to get scanned. Now, what we'll do next is we'll take a look at this data in some software 
and show some different ways of working with the data and creating some CAD or maybe some drawings uh, and, and wrap up uh, uh, from there. All right, so now that we're done 3D scanning, we're here in the standard VX element software. This is the software that comes with the scanner. And uh, what you'll notice, and I alluded to this earlier, is we put those domes and those spheres on uh, uh, on the, uh, you know, all, all around on the panels and on the transformer, but you don't notice them here in the software. That's because the new VX11 uh, uh, software automatically would get rid of those. In the past, it would only get rid of just the individual targets, but now it'll find those domes, those half domes or those full spheres and automatically get rid of them. Of course, it got rid of the speed target tape because those are individuals and you can't, again, you can't even see where the target tape was. Uh, with it being that clear material. So here's our scan data. We can take a look at it. We can do all the basic kind of mesh editing tools uh, uh, that you normally would do. But typically in, in let's say, the construction industry, we, we're, we're really not you know looking to fill in every hole and, and do that kind of stuff. One of the things you might want to do, and you can do this right here in the basic software, is just take some measurements. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say measure distance. And let's say I just want to measure the distance between the two panels. Well, I can pick here and I can pick here and I don't have to make them like try to be perpendicular or parallel or anything like that. Now that dimension obviously is like 36.3. But if I look over here in the X direction, okay, you can see it's 36. So straight across, it would be 36 inches, okay? So I can pull some dimensions. Let's say I want to know how far the panel is. Uh, from from the wall over here again I'll just click on it just click anywhere on the wall and what I'm really looking at is this dimension here 35 and if I exit out of this and you know want to come back to it later if I click on this we'll see those dimensions so you get the 3d measurement which you know it's hard to kind of line it up just in by by clicking points right but you just look at the XYZ values and you can see so the X here is 36 and then the X over here is roughly 35 okay so you can pull these dimensions really off any of this geometry and sometimes that may be all you need you, you, the great thing is is you don't have to go out and hand measure it and then hope you got everything or take a bunch of photos and have a bunch of drawings as we mentioned we were able to set up in a few minutes and scan this whole thing uh, in no time so you know maybe call it 30 total minutes to capture this data uh, and then you have it and you can go back and measure anything you want uh, anytime you want okay so this is in the standard VX element software I'm going to show you what you can do in either reverse engineering or CAD software next okay so now we're in uh, geomagic design X now there's lots of products you can use for this, uh, what I'm about to show. Geomagic uh, uh, for SolidWorks would be a good one. VX model would be a good one. Um, you know, any CAD system that can work with scan data uh, would work just fine. Because what I'm going to do now, what, what I've already done, is I've actually created CAD. Okay? So the problem with scan data is, you know, it's it's kind of messy and it's not, it's not really geometry you can work with in a CAD system. So what I did is I CAD modeled this. So let's turn off the mesh. And now I, this is all planes and features uh, and extrusions. And uh, I use the uh, pipe and sweep wizard here in Design X. And, and I've designed it now. Now it's all 3D CAD. So now it's all surfaces and solids with associated sketches. And then from here, I could create drawings. Uh, I could do various layouts. I could do my material calculations. You know, if I was CNC bending some of this pipe, um, you know, that had some curves to it or something like that, I could do all that. Okay. So now we have real CAD. Now this, you know, will take a little bit longer to do, but it's not too difficult. And depending on the, the tools, e either in your reverse engineering software or your CAD system, you know, you could model something like this fairly quickly. But, but this has a lot more value and use as a CAD model, either in this case a 3D model or going straight to a 2D print. So once again, there's our raw scan data like we talked about. And then here is our CAD data. And CAD data can be output as STEP or IGES or Parasolid, where scan data can only be output as STL or OBJ.
Okay, so polygon mesh, which you see here, and then actual CAD data that you see here. So those are some of the downstream uses of once you 3D scan it, turning it into CAD. Maybe you're going to be fabricating or bending some sheet metal or doing some other fabrication. But this is what a CAD model would look like from that 3D scan data. All right, so this wraps up the video on the HandyScan Max for things like electrical panels and conduit, piping, anything like that. And you could see within five minutes, I was set up and ready to scan. Get the scanner out, calibrate it, which only takes a minute, throw some targets on of the various different types of targets, and I was able to scan about a, you know, a 12, 15 foot by three, four foot area here in a matter of minutes. So if you're doing larger type work, uh, you know, big stuff, big castings, layouts, things like that, the new HandyScan Max is really a nice product for this kind of work. Now, if you want to learn more, as I mentioned earlier, if you'd like an on-site demo, you'd like a virtual demo, or you're interested in hiring EMS to come out and do 3D scanning or inspection for you as a service, you can reach us at 877-845-2700, or send us an email at info at ems3d.com, or in the description below is a link to a quick contact form. You know, fill out just a couple pieces of information and we'll reach out and get in touch with you. But this is the new HandyScan Max.